Welcome back. The United States has a possible path to repositioning its relationship with China in the Biden administration. That path could go through Europe. Jordan Link is a China policy analyst at the Center for American Progress, writing about this issue with his colleagues in War on the Rocks. Jordan, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. You and uh, Katrina Mulligan, Laura Edwards write this. If the next administration's to succeed in recalibrating its relationship with Beijing, U.S. officials will have to work quickly to build a unified coalition of partners and allies to blunt the challenges of China's ascendance. What does that look like? What does that building that coalition look like? Great, that's a great question. So it looks like that we have several key mutual interests between the U.S. and Europe vis-a-vis -vis China, whether it's pandemic response efforts, uh, climate change, tech policy, addressing human rights abuses. So trying to find a way to kind of bring everyone together, build a bigger tent, have a bigger team of partners and allies to kind of address those common issues or common values that we have. You and your colleagues write that European perspectives toward China are rapidly changing. Where have they been and are they changing in a way that makes it more likely that they're going to be willing to collaborate with us based on where we've been and where the Biden administration is likely to take us? Uh, yes, it's very important to point out that European perspectives are changing. So this is not just a, you know, Washington centric policy that's being put together or something like that. Um, there is, you know, definitely real change, and this is a real opportunity for U.S. policy um, to kind of change and, and loop in at European allies and partners. Um, for instance, the European Commission for the first time recently labeled China as a strategic competitor. Um, there's also a draft paper circulating calling this like a once-in-a-generation um, opportunity for collaboration with the U.S. vis-a-vis uh, -vis China. So... Um, there's definitely lots of big changes going on. And then in the wake of the global pandemic, um, China has carried out some disinformation campaigns that have not resonated very well at all um, with European uh, citizens and in European capitals. So uh, there's a time for change. How much of that change in Europe's position has come about as a result of things that China has done, as you just alluded to about the pandemic, and how much of it has been because of changes just in the way that Europe has decided to think? Mm. I think a lot of it has to do with how China has managed their relationship. Um, oftentimes they've mismanaged the relationship to their own detriment. Um, like I've already said, um, lots of disinformation campaigns and different things of that nature that just have not resonated. Um, there's also lots of, you know, whether it's through China's big um, foreign policy push, the Belt and Road Initiative, lots of economic promises that have not come to fruition. And so there's just this real feeling or sentiment that Europe has kind of had enough of the same old, same old from Beijing. It would be reasonable then if the Biden administration's uh, relationship with Europe about China included an element of we told you so, because those are basically the things that the United States has been saying about China for a number of years. And Europe decided for whatever reason during that same period, we don't think they're quite as bad as the United States does. Am I reading that right or am I reading too much into the events of the last decade or so, Jordan? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I would not go with the we told you so attitude. I would try to have much more, um, you know, positive vision, positive thinking, trying to create a big tent, trying to bring in as many partners and allies just to create more options. Um, you and your colleagues write policymakers in European capitals are watching the United States to gauge opportunities to join forces. You outlined those a little bit earlier. Is that something you expect to see accelerate in the coming year, two years? Oh, for sure. Yeah, we're already seeing it accelerating with that draft document that I've already previously mentioned. Um, so hopefully once that document's actually published and then we start seeing, you know, real changes and more overtures from Europe towards Washington about what to do with, you know, China relations. Um, it's going to, I think it's definitely going to pick up. There are four primary areas that you and your colleagues write about, climate change, technology policy, human rights, democratic values, and trade. Are there uh, some of those four that you think are more ripe for collaboration between the United States and Europe or that will require more work in that collaboration? Mm. I think that the areas that are ripest is definitely going to be climate change and tech policy. Um, we've seen Europe kind of forging ahead and keeping the Paris Agreement, um, you know, chugging along. So the U.S. has to, you know, get right back in that um, and use that as a way to exact better outcomes vis-a-vis -vis Beijing. Um, and then on tech policy, um, especially with, like, disinformation and things of that nature, 
Um, Europe has experienced a lot of its own disinformation campaigns, whether it's from China or, you know, even Russia, since Russia's right there on their doorstep. So if we can kind of learn from each other and try to uh, exchange best practices and try to see how, how can we address this problem. Um, 30 seconds, Jordan, and this question may be semantic more than logistics. Uh, you and your colleagues ref uh, refer to the European Union throughout this piece. Is it important that we maintain the collaboration with the EU as a body or with the individual nations as well? Yes, um, it's definitely a dual challenge. I think we should be doing both, but um, I think it's just easier. Um, it's pr probably more coordinated to go through the European Union first. Jordan Link, thank you very much for joining me. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much.